Hello everyone, thanks for joining and welcome to the March Ethereum.org community call. I've shared the agenda for today's call in the chat, feel free to check it out and follow along. In summary, Jakob and Nuno will go through what they've been working on in their first months in terms of design. Luca will give an update on the translations program. Corlin will talk a little bit about our awesome new Layer 2 page. Um, we've got a pop-up going on as well. We've got a guest speaker, Colfax, who will talk a little bit about his latest project. Sam is going to talk about our plans for Q2 and a couple of more miscellaneous items. Um, before all that, we have Nico from the Ethereum.org team joining the call for the first time today. Um, so Nico, I'll just give you a minute to introduce yourself. Nico, are you with us? Here we can maybe look back to that. Um, so yeah, in terms of the agenda, um, first up we've got Jakob and Nuno who will be sharing an update on their first 30 days um, for product design. I'll uh, stop sharing my screen just now and I'll let you take the floor. Hello everyone, I'm Nuno. Nice to see you all again. Um, I will share my screen. We have like four slides just to go through a little bit what has been the last month for us, our first month working uh, in the team. So, uh, hello everyone. So, uh, we will start with uh, the idea to, to give a quick one month update from the newly designed team, me and Jacob. Jacob, are you there? Yes, I'm here listening. Hello, everybody. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, super. Super awesome to join the team. It's been a wonderful uh, and really productive first month. Uh, just thank you. A big, big shout out to the team and to the community. We have some conversations over, over Discord around design, and we're starting to build uh, a more design designish approach uh, for the for Ethereum.org. So it's been really fun first month. And then um, a quick update of what we've put out there with the help uh, we, that we already been hands-on, uh, the L2 page. Uh, it was an ongoing process that we helped. Corwin will uh, talk more about that later today, but it was uh, our first as a design team uh, within the team uh, to put some page out there. And the staking, uh, it's the one that has been taking a lot of our time uh, and we've asked for your help. So, um, Jacob, do you want to go through a, a little bit what has been going on? Yes, sure. So, uh, as you can see, Nuno is sharing our Figma file. And uh, for this particular redesign of staking page, uh, we already had some <coughs> ideas what uh, the new content should be. But uh, in the spirit of open, opening up our process and design and our plans, we also decided to engage more with the community before we actually uh, released the page out. And after we had some initial drafts and some um, plan how the website, the page should probably look, we decided to share these uh, mockups with the community here on Discord and in the GitHub issue. <clears throat> and so anyone who wants to see, you could you can go to the uh, Epix Discord channel. This one is specifically staking. And here we were sharing uh, links to this for people to actually give us feedback on what the content is on the general structure of the page if it makes sense how the 
uh, layout is prepared and as you can see each of these little bubbles represented the feedback from some of you and we had quite nice discussions with any of you through uh, this sharing of the prototype which helped which really helped us greatly to push the designs and content further and helped us validate our uh, ideas a little bit before we actually release the page. And so yeah. uh, right now uh, I'm showing like the, the first was like, a, like Jacob said, a wire framing kind of approach just to get some feedback on the contents, more content based approach and see what what's missing what's going on and then I, I will show you the figma file it's a messy file as you can see but uh, it's been a, co a super collaborative uh within the team uh, work and um just showing uh the final uh images for that uh are being developed uh and you can see the on the pr there's a url to uh to see on the browser it's almost done uh but all those details that we've put in like uh the icons like um, understanding the flow of the page uh, with this call to actions or the, we've discussed which uh, on a design wise, uh, should it be a full color, uh, go through the, the different uh, sticking uh, options that we are putting out there. There's a lot of different uh, decisions that we've made here. And now uh, we will ask like a second round of opinions uh, next week with the, with the page um, up and running on code but overall it was a really fun process and uh it's been really good uh to collaborate with everyone uh either the team or the community so thank you so much for for your help the ones that helped um so next uh jacob do you want to mm -hmm. take it yeah so uh first of all the way the process you just saw we are hoping to do this more often on basically any new page or redesign so this was like a pilot version but it had i think quite good feedback and so we want to start doing this more and maybe over time we will start asking questions and for feedback even earlier in the process so that's that's all about preparing to release a new redesign and this is about actually uh, so what happens after the page is released? Uh, you may know that on some of the sub pages on ethereum.org currently, we have already this widget asking you whether uh, the page is satisfactory in terms of its content. And uh, this is not everywhere right now, but we are, ho we are uh, hoping to get some sort of feedback loop on every page we have out there to gather some insights whether the contents that we put out are actually good and um, in the future we will be asking for more feedback this way so that anyone who is interested can give us some valuable input on how the pages should be changed for example. And um, this is going to be one of the main focus for the next uh, quarter, at least try to get as much data as we can. But the second focus uh, will be uh, starting a new process that we call it open source design. Uh, this process, uh, we are starting to put out there some, some issues on, on GitHub, start to uh, ask for some help. Uh, the community but we'll we will open it to a lot of different things uh we just need to create the framework to do so. though uh we'll be using figma as the base for design system discord to talk with you to put out call call to actions and to have some discussions uh and to focus discussions on the issues or on the things to improve on ideas we will use github the combination of the three of them uh will be the the way that uh we think could work at least uh, in principle, it worked. We haven't tried it out. Uh, so we will be focused on this as well for the next quarter. And we are super excited to open the process to um, to everyone to help us uh, build uh, better 
design wise, uh, user journey, UX, UI, whatever you call it, it will be a lot of better experience uh, using the Ethereum.org. And that being said, um, it's all that we have for now. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. Joshua, it's your call again. Awesome. Yeah, really exciting stuff. Um, as Jakob and Nuno noted, if you're interested in collaborating with us on any of this, then our design channel is open to you. And a lot more to come on that very soon, hopefully. Uh, next up, we've got Luca, who's just going to give us an update on the translation program and some things are happening with that. Hey everyone. Uh, I'm going to give you some quick updates on the recent developments in the Ethereum.org translation program. To start, I'd like to call out the fact that non-English page views in comparison to English page views on the website seem to hit a record high every month. Last month we had 456,000 views on translated pages, which represents 18% of all page views. Um, a, a new record. Statistics like this are good confirmation of the effort that our contributors put into translating the website into many different languages. We believe that making educational content on ethereum.org available to everyone is important and the fact that people seem to want to read this content in their native language is encouraging. Thank you to all the contributors to the translation program for helping us achieve this. Um, I'm sharing a chart of unique page views by language other than English, where you can see the progress that non-English page views are making. Basically, this chart is growing all the time. Moving on. We have recently started translating key posts from the Ethereum Foundation blog to other languages as well. Specifically, specifically we have... Sorry about that. Specifically, we have translated the ETH2 renaming blog post, which goes into detail on why we have moved away from ETH2 terminology on the website. This was translated into 10 languages, which we've chosen based on the number of speakers and number of visits to translated pages into these languages on the website. The second blog post we have translated is the Kiln Merge Testnet announcement post, which was published when the Kiln Testnet launched in preparation for the merge. This was translated into 15 languages with the hope of getting as many eyes on it as possible to help with testing the merge. You can check out these and other blog posts on the EF blog. Links are available in the community call doc. Um, also posting them in the community call chat if anyone wants to check these out and read through them yourselves in your native language, perhaps. Next up, we have finished updating and cleaning up the ethereum.org, the glossary in our crowding project. Um, thanks to everyone who added input to the term base. It was incredibly valuable when updating the glossary. If you're helping us translate the website, you can use the glossary to find descriptions and establish translations for key terms in the project. While this update is done, we are still looking to further improve the glossary. So if you would like to help out with this, the spreadsheet is still available. Uh, feel free to add some terms that you think should be included in the glossary or any established translations here. Um, this was basically the first update of the glossary, but we are definitely looking to clean it up even further posting a link to this sp spreadsheet as well if you want to add some input and 
finally, also wanted to quickly mention the tags, links, and code snippets that appear throughout the project in Crowdin, which you can see in this segment, for example. These tags are often the source of confusion for translators who sometimes change or omit them. This leads to broken tags and links that need to be fixed. Um, for more information on how to differentiate between tags and how to handle them, we've added a section about this to the ethereum.org translators guide, which is available on the website. Also posting a link to this in the chat if you want to read up on how to deal with tags in translations. Um, in short, Tags should always be copied directly from the source, which can be done in several ways. Um, you can copy and paste them, which is probably not the best option, even though it's fast and easy. You can copy the source and translate everything around the tags, or you can click on them and they will automatically be copied to the target text. So fairly simple to keep this, these tags the same as the source. And um, yeah, basically these should always be unchanged and copied straight from the source. Um, as always, if anything is unclear, feel free to reach out to us in the Translate channel on Crowdin um, or send me a DM. That should be it for the translation program updates. Thanks again for all the contributors. And if you are bilingual and want to get involved with the translation program, reach out to us either on Discord, um, we have this translate channel, or you can simply join the project in Crowdin. Linking to the project in the community call chat. And then that is it for me. Thanks, everyone. Great, thank you, Luca. The the number of non English page views is really great to see, and also good to see the Ethereum Foundation blog post being made more accessible for non English speakers as well. Um, next up, we've got Corwin, who is going to talk a little bit about our newest page on Layer Twos. Hey guys, uh, can you see the page? Okay, just want to double check I shared right. And I guess you're me for that matter. Um, yeah, looks looks good to me. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, so last community call, we highlighted that we were working on a um, Layer 2 page. And this community call, we get to announce that we've delivered it. So this is a Layer 2 page that we've been working on for uh, quarter one. Um, basically, what we were looking to accomplish with it was a beginner to intermediate level kind of overview of what layer twos are um, and how they work. And so if we look through the page, um, we'll like navigate through it. We'll see up front some stats on layer two. So we can see like what an average transfer fee is, how much is locked into uh, layer two. So we can get some like really quick high level stats on what's going on in the layer two ecosystem. And we'll briefly like describe what's going on. Uh, or what a layer two is, sorry. Um, but then to do that, we need to like understand what a layer one is. So we define what the layer one looks like. Um, then we talk about like, why do we need layer two? What it means for scalability? Some of the benefits that layer two brings to the ecosystem and users. Then we talk a bit about how layer two rollups will work or how layer two works and specifically with rollups, um, the two different kinds being optimistic and zero knowledge. And we have a little bit of disclaimer on doing your own research. Uh, with this, we link out to L2Beats uh, risk uh, page. So it has a really good matrix to go to where it talks about different risks for the different projects. Um, so definitely recommend looking at this first before onboarding into any layer twos. Next, we look at a couple of uh, the layer two projects that are in the ecosystem. We have both generalized layer twos, meaning that like smart contracts are deployed onto these. They operate um, similar to the layer one in the sense of applications that can be deployed onto them. 
And with that, we link out to some bridges and if they have it available, ecosystem portals, which like shows what projects have been deployed in that ecosystem, for example. Um, then we also highlight some application specific layer twos. These are mainly ZK rollup ones, but what they are is just like very tailored uh, rollups to do a specific um, thing. So like DYDX, for example, is just for exchanges. Um, Hermes, which isn't on this page, is like just for payments. So uh, they're really application specific layer twos, but nonetheless, they're a layer two for this page. Uh, as well, we look at like noting what the difference between a layer two and a side chain Validium alternative blockchain uh, is. So that mainly being a layer two has to inherit the data availability and security from Ethereum. So in this case, like, uh, Polygon POS people will talk about quite often. We wouldn't consider that a layer two because it has its own consensus. It has its own uh, data availability. You can just bridge assets over to it. So it wouldn't really be classified as a layer two. However, Polygon is working on layer two solutions and we've um, heard feedback from the community around this. So um, I guess with this in mind, I'll quickly switch over to highlight. We have a um, suggest a layer two listing policy for uh, layer two projects. So if there's any layer two projects that you feel we've missed, um, please take a look at uh, suggesting a layer two through this uh, GitHub issue template. Um, we'll ask for um, information around the project. Um, so if you just provide us information and it meets the criteria, we'll take a look at it and try and get it onto this page here. Um, one of the main things that we note is it has to like be on l 2 beat. Um, so if like there's a layer two you guys are looking at adding or suggesting and it's not highlighted on that page, would definitely recommend going to l 2 beat before uh, filling out that form. Um, next, on the page, we go into like how to get onto a layer two. So there's two different ways that a user would get onto a layer two. So they would either have funds in their wallet and they're looking to bridge over. Um, so for that, we like any of these layer twos that are above here, um, we list in this like bridging component. So if you select one, um, we'll show you which wallets that bridge supports. And then you can click over and go directly to that bridge to bridge your assets over from mainnet. The other option is you have funds on an exchange. Um, and some exchanges are supporting direct deposits and withdrawals to a layer two instead of having to go on to mainnet. And so with that, we um, did a little bit of research and looked to highlight what, what exchanges do support this. So you'll only notice exchanges in this dropdown at the moment that um, do support deposit and withdrawals. And with that, we'll also, um, when you select an exchange, we'll list like what L2s um, that have been announced so far that are supported for deposits and withdrawals for those exchanges. And kind of the last thing, um, we just have some information that would be helpful for, for users looking to navigate this landscape. So um, more information side is like L2B, great resource for getting information on the various L2s. L2 fees is really good at just getting a quick glimpse of um, what the current fee would be when you're using a specific layer two. And we actually use a similar API at the top to like get that average um, average cost to transfer ETH. So um, we're pulling from the same resource as L2 fees, but theirs is more broken down. Um, and then Chainlist is a really easy way for you to use if your wallet supports importing RPCs. Uh, it's a really easy way to just go and connect to a network um, without having to do a bunch of like manual inputting of um, the, the chain ID and the block explorer and all that stuff. So it's just a really easy resource to go to and just connect to a layer uh, in this case, like a layer two network. We're also highlighting some wallet managers that help give you a holistic view of your um, assets across all networks. So uh, wallet managers like Zapper, Xerion, and DeBank let you see assets on Mainnet and Arbitrum and Optimism and DK Sync. It'll just like cover all of your uh, networks that your assets might be on. Um, and it just makes it easier to track where where you are in this environment. And we have a few um, frequently asked questions 
and uh, for the reading section as well. Um, but yeah, really proud of this page. Really happy that we got like a whole our whole team working on it. We talked to layer two projects in the space. Um, really happy with how this page turned out, but definitely would appreciate any feedback that you guys have to give. I uh, feel like this page can still be improved upon, but as a version one, very proud of this page that we shipped. And with that, I'll pass it back to Josh. Awesome. Thanks again, Corwin. Uh, yeah, the, the page looks awesome. To echo Corwin, if anyone has any thoughts or any feedback, please feel free to share them in our Layer 2 channel under the Epics category. Or you can send us a DM if that's more your thing. Um, so I'll start sharing my screen again. Make sure everyone can see that. Yeah, so next up, POAPs. Um, you'll need a phone or QR scanner for this. Here, where are the instructions for claiming the POAP? But unfortunately, the POAP bot that we use has freaked out a little bit and isn't working properly. Um, but we found an alternative. So here is a QR code that you can scan. Um, I'll leave this up for a minute or two just to let everyone scan. And I guess when I stop sharing my screen, I can also share the, the direct link to this in the community call chat. We can see the numbers of people claiming them, jumping up. Okay, you should all be pretty good at claiming pull-ups by now, so I think that's been long enough. Um, as I said, I'll post the link to the QR itself in the community call chat, um, but that will be gone and deleted after the call as well. So I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, next up, we're going to have Paul Faxon as a guest speaker for us, who's going to be talking a little bit more about pull-ups, um, not for this call specifically, but related to his latest the project and um, so Colfax I'll stop streaming and I'll let you take it away. No problem. Thanks for the intro. Hey hey everybody. Um I so I come from uh, a project that I'm working on called Git Poap. So speaking of Poaps, what we're doing with Git Poap is we're actually rewarding Poaps to open source software contributors. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and show you guys a few different things. One second. Sweet. Everyone can see the Git pull up. Joshua, can you see the Git pull up uh, homepage? Yeah, we see you. Sweet, sweet. So yeah, as I mentioned, what we're building with Git pull up is essentially an integration of pull app minting into GitHub. So you can mint pull apps to your open source contributors based on um, either pull requests or eventually maybe like issues and other contributions like that in the future. Um, for those of you not familiar, I imagine most of you are familiar with POAP, but briefly, it stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. And it's basically an NFT that represents an action that you've taken. And what we're doing is we're using POAPs to represent contributions to open source software. Um, a cute little diagram here that one of our designers made, which I, uh, which I really love. Um, something that, I, that is very exciting to share with you guys is actually the Ethereum Dot org community and the fact that you guys actually do give out PO apps for contributions to your web page was actually one of the ideas for turning that into a platform and with a number of other tools around it. Um, so we're very excited to be launching. We're actually launching this platform tomorrow. We have been in progress uh, for quite some time now on it and it's just super exciting. Um, 
So speaking of launch, uh, so we posted uh, our launch plan about a week and a half ago. Uh, you can find that um, either on Medium or on Twitter. We're actually at GitPoap, at G-I-T-P-O-A-P. And I'll just go through our launch plan a little bit with you guys. Um, so for this, it's fun to issue POAPs to contributors and share sort of this like immutable recognition. Um, on top of that, like on its own, that's exciting. But on top of that, what we see is that this, this bringing the record of contribution on chain can actually enable a lot of other future applications downstream. So one, you'll actually be able to like have sort of like a resume on chain so you can build up sort of your POAP collection to essentially tell a story about what contributions you've made. And another cool idea that we have in the future is if we wanted to say fund a project in the future and we wanted to, um, yeah, fund a project, essentially if we have this on-chain record of contribution through POAP, we know exactly who we need to fund. So we're working on different tools like that in the future that are gonna be built on top of GitPoap. For now, we're focused on getting these POAPs into the hands of people. And uh, we actually have a cool little feature that we haven't launched yet. It's coming out tomorrow, but I'll show you guys a couple leaked designs. Um, let me post this link actually in the community call channel if any of you guys want to take a look. Um, and then keep an eye out uh, on our Twitter for an official launch announcement tomorrow. We don't know exactly what time it's gonna happen. Um, the reason why I'm excited to be here with you guys is for our launch, we're gonna be giving POAPs out to the contributors of about 15 different projects, open source projects central to the Ethereum ecosystem. And of course, ethereum.org is in this list. So we are gonna be minting POAPs to anybody who contributed at least one pull request that got merged into the repo uh, for any year the project has been alive. So going back all the way into history. So ethereum.org started, this project started in 2019. So we're gonna actually issue these historical annual contributor POAPs. I understand many of you probably already got a POAP, but we're gonna be issuing another one that comes from Git POAP that'll be memorializing your contribution. Um, so, oh, I don't wanna show you that yet. I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna, I don't have the uh, actual app prepared to demo to you guys, although you'll be able to use it tomorrow. But I'll show you guys, uh, this is our Figma designs for how it's gonna work. And I want to, there's a few tweaks that we made and then all of this text in here is also just dummy text. So like, uh, don't read anything into anything that you see here. But this is the basics of the app. And since uh, you guys invited me here, I wanted to sort of leak these designs to you a little bit. So this is gonna be our homepage. By the way, uh, I'm talking quite a lot. If anybody has any questions, feel free to just pop into the chat or just interrupt me. Um, so this is going to be our homepage, some general statistics on like who's uh, who's been claiming, most claimed POAPs last week, most honor contributors, kind of like a leaderboard. Uh, recently added projects, we're actually not launching with this component, but it'll be there soon. And then you can suggest projects here. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are only launching with these 15, but we want to onboard uh, many, many more projects. My goal is I think to onboard like about 500 or so projects in the next six months. Um, so if you have any other projects that you guys are contributing to that you want to issue POAPs for, sorry, MIT POAPs to the contributors for, uh, please reach out to me. We also have a form uh, that you can do gitpop.io slash or pound suggest. I'll drop this into the chat. Thank you, Kev, sir. Thank you, uh, Paul, Joshua, everyone. Thanks for complimenting the designs. I wish I could take credit for them, uh, but it's an awesome design firm called Deep Work that helped us with these. Um, as you can see in the top right, so Andre's amazing. Love that guy. Uh, in the top right, you can connect your wallet. So you might be asking yourself, well, like, how do you find out the address of the people that are on GitHub? In the top right, you connect your wallet, and then you also can log into your GitHub account via OAuth. Um, and this way you can create kind of like a fleeting connection between your accounts. And when you click this, it'll actually turn into a button that will allow you to mint your POAPs because the POAPs are based on your GitHub history. And then this way you're connecting it to your wallet. Um, we'll have a guide about that that we're gonna be posting tomorrow as well. 
Uh, Git POAP will be at DevConnect. We're actually we're minting POAPs for anybody who contributes in the ETH Staker Hackathon on the 21st. And yes, there will be swag. Uh, oh man, my camera's not on. We have some pretty cool patches too. Uh, so I'll, I'll share those with you at DevConnect. Come and find me. This is the, the POAP page. So like basically this would be ethereum.org core contributor. Um, and then the list of holders. Uh, I don't want to take too much more time, so I'm going to zoom ahead. This is your digital profile or digital resume. Um, again, this is sort of the mock-up design. We aren't launching with this top component yet, but this is super alpha leak. We're going to have this sort of configurable art piece that you can do behind your profile, uh, but not yet. Um, right now, we have the ability to show your Git POAP collection as well as all of the rest of your POAPs. And then this, the, the contrast is not great right here, but there's a little heart here that you can use to boost up uh, some POAPs to be featured. And it gives you some sort of information about the contributions you've been making. Um, and then for claiming POAPs, we have a simple claiming modal that when you see here, if you click up here, view and claim three POAPs, you can claim them right here on the site. So that is like a high level overview of what we're building, what we're launching with tomorrow. Again, we haven't really shared these designs with everybody, so I'm super excited to share them with you and that, uh, that everybody is given some positive feedback. Very excited to support the Ethereum.org community. Um, and you guys are amazing. And I bet you guys are wondering, wow, like this is so cool. I wonder what the Ethereum.org POAP design is. Well, here you go. This is actually one of my favorite designs. Uh, it's by this designer, Martina. And um, this is the founding year, so 2019. And then we have a year, uh, the same design, but different uh, year, of course, for each year. And so depending on what years you contributed, you'll get a version of this POAP. And we'll be doing ongoing issuance throughout the rest of 2022. And then, of course, going forward. Uh, we're not sure if it's going to happen live. So like immediately when you get your merge PR or if it's going to like take a little while, we're working on the technical side of that. But we'll share with that with you guys. Um, so yeah, this is Ethereum.org POAP. And then the last thing I want to mention to you guys is launch is happening tomorrow. But this Saturday, so I guess three days from now, um, we are having a large party call. And we, I don't know if you guys have ever done a POAP.art painting party. But basically what it is, it's kind of like Reddit, uh, our place. Uh, where you can do this like pixelated pixel by pixel drawing and your ability to place pixels is actually dependent upon your POAP holdings. So you can place a pixel only if you have the right POAP and the more POAPs you have that are in the, the selected group of POAPs, the faster you can paint pixels. And so I see, I think Joshua posted, yeah, a, a link to this. I highly encourage you guys to join. Um, it's gonna be live streamed on YouTube. The links and everything are in this post, and we'll give you instructions for how to paint and everything um, on Saturday. And another, the last thing is, if you guys are super interested, um, let me just zoom over there right now. On the Git POAP Discord server, we've actually created, so you can, the way that these, these parties normally unfold is uh, people create these painting guilds and they work together because it's very hard to draw like a whole painting on your own. And so you can see here, we actually created an ethereum.org guild. Um, oh, nice, Paul, Joshua, what should we want to recruit? What should we draw? So yeah, if you guys want, pop on over to the GitPoap Discord server, um, which is gitpoap.io slash here. Let me just add this into the chat. Um, or sorry. Um, Joshua, is it cool if I post the Git POAP uh, Discord link? Oh, amazing, you already did. I already did that. Thank you. So you can swing on over there and then find the ethereum.org guild. And then I encourage you guys to collaborate on a drawing. You can do anything you want, uh, really. Maybe something cool related to ethereum.org would, uh, would be fun. Um, but yeah, so that's all I've got for you guys. Super excited to drop POAPs to, <clears throat> to all these contributors not only to ethereum.org, but just generally to open source. And yeah, thanks for welcoming me onto the call today. Awesome, thanks, cool, thanks. Really exciting stuff. Uh, if you're a thank historical you, you. contributor to ethereum.org or any GitPoap project, please check out GitPoap and get your Poap.
Um, should definitely try and cat herd some community members on this and organise a painting party. Maybe we can talk a bit more about that after the call. Um, last but not least, I've got Sam who's going to talk a little bit about our Q2 plans. Awesome, thank you, Josh. Thanks for the chat, Colfax. I'm pretty fired up to get my get po up. Um, let course. me share my screen. <laughs> Okay, so not too much to share on my screen, mostly just gonna walk through my notes in this community call doc that Josh shared earlier. Um, what I wanna chat about today is ethereum.org team roadmap. Um, quick reminder, this is just the roadmap for ethereum.org, our team, um, not the actual roadmap for Ethereum, the protocol, um or anything on that large of a scale just for the website itself um so quick overview on just like our team's roadmap process and quick reminder on our team we now have nine full-time contributors um who i guess you could say is like the core team who helps you know facilitate these calls um, who help maintain the Discord and the actual ethereum.org GitHub. Um, but obviously the ethereum.org team is much larger than that, right? Like thousands of translators, hundreds of code and content contributors make all this stuff possible. So thank you all for uh, helping to contribute that. So in terms of like how we do road mapping, um, at least for now, this is definitely an iterative process and encourage feedback on it. But at least for now, what our core team tries to do is essentially on a quarterly basis. So every three months, um, do some planning and publish an outline on the stuff we're looking to tackle. Um, so I linked to some examples just to uh, kind of highlight the fact. Uh, here's a quick look at Ooh, probably can't see my other screen. Um, feel free to follow that link um, if you're interested, or I should probably just figure out how to do that. Oh boy. Um, I've shared the Q1 product roadmap in the chat as well. Cool. I'll just stick with this doc for now, um, but I've included links if you guys are curious. Basically, we outline one high-level overview GitHub issue that maps out a brief summary of all the initiatives we're trying to do. Um, you might ask like, how we try to identify this issue, these issues. How do we pick one initiative over the other? Um, I'd say like in short, it's primarily based off feedback from the community. Um, so I'd say like we use a mix of just like internal subjective opinions, internal insights from say quantitative metrics. Um, I guess a, like a quick obvious example going down to below what we've identified as like focusing on some redesigns and revamp to our wallet resources. One example of that is like we can see from our ethereum.org traffic data that those wallet pages we've created about like two years ago now, they drive over 10% of all site page views. So from the hundreds of pages on the website, we know those two pages talking about wallets, helping people find and compare Ethereum wallets, are like a very high engagement, high area of interest on the website. Um, and we also know intuitively, right? Like for anyone onboarding into Ethereum, like you need an Ethereum wallet. That is a huge pathway and like a huge onboarding step for anyone involved. Um, so kind of makes sense that that's an area we want to prioritize. Um, 
outside of that, again, we rely on a lot of feedback from the community. So people creating issues on GitHub, people interacting with us on Twitter, people asking questions in our Discord. A lot of what we do is reacting to, hey, there's a lot of people who are servicing this issue or this lack of educational content that's out there. Um, maybe we're in a unique position to try to hop in and solve that. Um, so yeah, quick summary on just like how we try to ultimately pick which initiatives to work on. Um, so we try to publish this overview roadmap issue for every three months. Um, in part, that's to you know hold ourselves accountable, um, but primarily that's to also like foster engagement, right? Like we want feedback from you on if we're focusing on the right things. And we also want input from you, like if you want to get involved, right? Like if you are an expert on Ethereum staking and you wanna give input on how those resources um, should be designed, what content we should include, what product should be included, like that's why we do this out in the open so that we can enable folks like you to get involved. Um, so taking that specific staking example, um, we try to create and we'll be going forward specific GitHub issues for each Epic initiative itself. Um, so I linked to that staking page example um, where we go into a little more detail and just use that as a primary place to, to track progress. Um, we also create a Discord channel um, for each of these major epics, just for more, you know, fluid discussion. Um, make it a little more casual, so folks aren't intimidated to, you know, post a really well thought out comment in GitHub. Um, maybe they can just hop in, ask questions, get involved in that front. So, if you guys are interested. Um, in getting involved with a particular initiative, I think you know the combination of GitHub and Discord. I would definitely recommend as as places to start on that front. Um, so high level overview of our process for creating roadmaps. Um, as you folks are probably aware, it is now April, um, so it is so it is Q two in in the biz lingo. Um, so we are currently in the process of mapping out our, our roadmap for the next, next three months. Um, short story is that it's still in progress. We still haven't finalized that. So stay tuned. Um, probably next week I'll be posting a GitHub issue and sharing that around. Um, so looking forward to your input on that. But to give you a few teasers on the stuff we'll be working on, um, some of this stuff is you know, carried over from initiatives we wanted to get to in Q1, um, but in part because we didn't really have the design resources on hand that we do now, um, we basically pushed, pushed these things a ba a back a bit. But just to touch on some of these things recently, um staking page revamp you know since we initially launched our staking page when um you know the beacon chain first launch and staking actually became possible really the only option was as a solo staker um so a lot of the content was focused on that and pushing people to the staking launchpad um since then a whole bunch of different options include pooled staking, staking as a service, um, even within the solo staking space, you know, more tools to make that more accessible um, and easier for people to do. Um, there's just been an explosion of like resources and products and tools and projects in that space. So we're very close, um, should be launching some updated pages around that next week to help users navigate that landscape. Um, but really exciting to see, and I think just goes to show, it really is a full-time job to keep up with all the evolutions and like progress across the Ethereum ecosystem. 
in a similar fashion, um, the wallet resources we have on the site, you know, I mentioned those two pages we have on just like learning what a wallet is, what does it do, why does it matter, um, and a page to help people find and compare wallets. Um, you know, of the million to two million visits we get on ethereum.org any given month, you know, over 10% of page views are revolve around wallets. Um, since we created those pages well over two years ago, um, the wallet landscape has also very much changed. You know, we've gone from listing about like five wallets to over 40 now, I think. Um, and the features that people care about, about Ethereum wallets have certainly changed, right? Like, you know, different devices, um, different features they support, you know, layer two support wasn't, <laughs> wasn't a thing back when we first launched this page. So thinking through what are better ways to kind of display and compare all these different products now that there are so many great options out there. Um, as well as the features that uh, we display and allow folks to compare on um, will certainly be a focus. Um, learn page redesign. Um, was going to show my screen, but yeah, if you do go to ethereum.org, um, you may notice that the learn kind of section of the site is a bit overwhelming. Um, mostly good news because over time, with a bunch of content contributors like many yourselves helping create pages and resources for us. Like we, we now just have a ton of content on ethereum.org, hundreds of pages that help explain different aspects uh, of, of Ethereum. Um, so we're working on ways to just like better format that. What this will probably take shape is just, you know, a landing page as a learn hub to help kind of categorize different pathways, different learning topics, um, whether it's like the fundamentals of Ethereum, whether it's about the protocol and different upgrades and the governance of the protocol itself, whether it's learning about different use cases of Ethereum like DeFi and NFTs and DAOs, um, creating better ways to kind of just like discover all the content on on the site moving through a couple more of these i'll try to make this quick um merge prep as the as the merge upgrade approaches um we obviously want to keep people informed and let them know what they need to do um if anything whether they're just a hodler or a node operator or a dap developer making sure people are aware of what needs to happen um, Blog translations. Luca mentioned this earlier that we've been undergoing a few initiatives to to translate the blog. Um, the Ethereum Foundation blog, you know, it's another great resource on a lot of Ethereum related content. Some of it extremely timely, such as you know, merge testnet updates. Um, right now, we have started rolling out some translations on these pages but we've been doing it somewhat in a hacky way, given that the, the code base of the blog doesn't actually support internationalization natively. Um, so pushing that forward is something we'll be focused on this quarter. Ethereum wiki consolidation. So if you folks have ever Googled stuff for Ethereum, um, I think it's gotten better over the years. But what you'll probably find is inevitably stumbling across what are, you know, out outdated Stack Overflow posts, um, outdated blog posts, um, and there is a, a handful of of wiki and documentation resources that the community has maintained over the years, but have basically fallen out of date and unfortunately are no longer maintained. Um, so one of our contributors, who I believe is on the call, Joseph Cook, um, is helping lead the charge on this front to basically, how do we consolidate some of these resources? How do we keep the content on the internet up to date about Ethereum? So people, particularly new to the space, don't get confused, frustrated, unsure of where to contribute if they want to make updates. Um, so we'll be doing some work around consolidating those resources 
and making sure we're maintaining those and keeping those up to date just to keep that experience a little smoother. Um, and finally, the open design system, which you know Nuno and Jakob touched on earlier on the call, so I won't dig in too much, but basically identifying ways, um, experimenting with new approaches of how do we as a team and ethereum.org as a product really open up our design process um, and allow people who want to get involved the ability to do that and to contribute to the product <laughs> from a design standpoint. So stay tuned for a post. I'll outline these and more initiatives in more detail. Um, but again, the whole goal is really just to get you guys involved, both in terms of giving feedback, in terms of what you'd like to see on the website, um, and what you'd like to collaborate on, what you'd like to get involved with, um, and encourage you to, uh, to do that when the time comes. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sam. Lots of exciting stuff to work on for Q2. Um, and lastly, just some miscellaneous items. Um, the Ethereum.org team will be in Amsterdam for DevConnect. Uh, so if you're going to be there and want to chat or meet up, we're all pretty friendly. Uh, or if you've got an idea for Ethereum.org um, that you want to pitch us, even better. Uh, last thing was, no, no, I believe you had one more thing that you wanted to share related to DevConnect. Yes, we'll be having a uh, special treats during the Death Connect. So we'll be having some special swag. Uh, just to share that with everybody. Yeah, so we've ordered quite a few t-shirts. Um, if you want one and you're in Amsterdam, come find us and we'll be more than happy to oblige. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think that's just about all that we have time for. Um, apologies if you asked a question in the Slido and we never got to it. Um, I'll try to endeavour to answer any questions in the community call chat or any that haven't been answered. Uh, thank you for everyone joining the call, all the community members and contrib contributors, um, our guides, Aniko, Muddleby, Lilo, Joseph, and thanks to Colfax for jumping on the call and taking the time to talk about GitPo app. All right, everyone, until next one, thanks very much.